Okay, so next stage is the leg. We're going to do the left leg. Now, how do we set this up within the node script? Um, in your node script, you don't want to have one node for the whole entire rotoscope. Since you may want to have the same methods here, the tracking, blurring, and eroding on a different one. Now, um, the first thing we want to do is to make a new fresh node, label it. Please do if people like when you label stuff. B erode filter channel merge merge them and connect all of your points with your viewers to that. So if we look here, it follows the same formatting as the head. It's all merged. So the leg um, does. The, can you use a tracker for the leg? Uh, yes, you can. Um, which point you would track this would be my. Would be, it would be very hard to do. The reason why I wouldn't do tracking for this shape, since others might, for me, since there's too much complexity changes for it, I might as well just do it with one shape, one roto node, and just change the different keyframes for each one. However, I'm sure a few other rotoscope artists would probably track the belt and use that as a basis for the transforming, but uh, too many different shapes to probably, I mean, if the track won't take too long, I probably would, but for this tutorial, I am just going to leave it as one. So, alright, so with the leg shape, we're going to start on frame zero. Now, since this is going to change a lot of shapes, we're going to have to kill the roto shape. Not a good word to use, but that's what we're going to do. So, where do we see this shape change dramatically? Where too many adding too many points would just cause too much jiggling and fishing. I would say frame probably frame frame five. So one shape for frame one, two, five would suffice for that. If you were to do one shape for this whole entire set, you will have too many points to move, too many points to transform. Um, you may be able to finish it off quickly, however the revisions, it will take too long, it will just be a mess and you would have to start all over. You'll be, I've done that so many times, it's not good. So let's start on frame five and let's make, uh, actually no, it's too much motion blur on that. Let's go to frame one. So frame one, let's make our shape. Now you can do the whole foot, I'm going to break this up um, since this foot can be its own different shape and follow the consistency. So that will be the cap of it. Now before we do any fine tuning, we're going to put it to where it's going to be killed off. So I'm going to go to frame 5, align it up as best as you can and from the Roto options where it says life it says all by default, however we want to double click it, go to frame range, and go to 1 to 5. This sets the life for the keyframe to 5, um, and then it just turns it off, ready for the new shape. Now, um, if there's a lot of motion blurring, do not turn it off, I would turn it off, I would overlap it. Um, since the motion blowing will still take into effect, however, you're still killing off that frame, and you can still re re uh, retain some of that motion blowing for that frame before. So keep in mind that. Look at that big difference between that framing. Oh. All right. So now that we've killed that off, um, let's make another shape, and then we can go to the fine tuning. So on frame six, we're going to start a new frame. Once you click onto it. It disappears which makes your workflow a lot less daunting. So this spot requires a lot more points than the previous one as you can see here and there's a uh, very little motion blurring too so and this shape we can kill at I'll say frame 11 uh actually yeah yeah frame 11 so I'll line that up and kill it off 
I'm prime range. Six to eleven. And we're gonna work on these two different killing frames since uh for simplicity's sake, you can copy this technique again and again and again until the roto is finished. But here we have a basic and here we have a big clothing crunch. So I started on frame six, but I've realized on the next frame under there's a lot more detail. So let me see if I can get away with it. So this is the beauty pass, and I'm using the beauty pass on the second on the second shape. Does not swim, which is good, it locks on. Bring that down. So any big changes, make sure you keep an eye on them. So make sure there's no swimming points. Keep the points locked down and magneted to it. And it's just pretty much changing the curving point to it. So I'm being heavily biased on this one. Now as you can see, I'm going frame by frame for this because uh, I can see that it requires it. Since I've had a start and end point, it still morphs along with it. Um, I'm not making new frames as I go along. Well, I am, but I still have a ending point to save me. And for these, just press highlight it. Press Z. So I'm so I'm in terms of keyframing points, it it I'm saved. I don't have to worry about. I'll just have to make a new shape. So obviously those points I just did need requires a fair bit of uh, beauty. But um, I'll do the other I'll do the other shape now. Trying to get a few mastering. Just have to do one average one. So let's move that. Let's keep those points up. As you can see, there's a radical change in shape here. However, so here I should technically start on frame two since I can see that change happening. Um, but for now, I'll just put that there. And I forgot to highlight and press Z. And let's give this the beauty. So for this, I'll put blurring up for one, for two, since it's really fine. Frame one, I'll do a few feathering for here. The gray looks good, it's just the red that is showing a lot of um, missing, uh, miss a lot of missing out on a lot of uh, detail in terms of the motion blur. Here is when the background's really apparent and I'm trying to find a mix between the red and the grey. So the grey here looks good, but then the red is starting to seep out too much. So then I have to resort back to the grey and be like, am I, can I see any yellow here? And if I do, you have to find a nice average between the two. It's not going to be graded on the footage, it's going to be graded on what can be seen. Uh, a lot of black <coughs> showing here. Again, finding the average. I can fill that off. And bring that out. Since this line here is sharp, this line here is all, all blurred, so we can feather that out. Um, I, I can probably see a bit too much. Um, background on here, so I'm going to have to turn the blurring down tab, bring that in a bit that looks a lot better so the red's filled a few pixels here but um, I'm going to move along to the next one uh, and uh, repeat the same process so now the frame 2 is when it changes shape, so to avoid swimming on this frame and that frame, this dent is here. That dent's here. This point's here. Put that up here. See. And that out. 
Oh, this is feathered, that's feathered, and that's, oh yeah, that's feathered. That point there is straight. That's feathered. That's feathered, that's straight. This is feathered. That's straight. Yep, yep, and this always is feathered. So here in the grey, uh, that yellow is just far too much. It, that is a clear case of too much. So we want to put it into the back into the mask shape, take it out until both sides are happy. So not too much yellow showing and not too much black showing. That's what we want. Okay, and repeat this process for both shapes. Um, but the main gist of this leg is to show you that um, it is advisable to kill shapes off if there's too many points, if the shape has changed too much. You can do this in its own roto node since this is the leg and the leg only. Um, do not do this technique within one roto node for everything. It makes your life a lot more difficult. You cannot change the feathering or the overall blur or eroding for it. Um, highly advisable to keep your own separate a roto tree for the different body shapes and uh, yeah that's pretty much um, that's pretty much what I can think of in terms of trying to do um, less hard rotoscoping to make your life as a lot more possible with rotoscoping the reality is is that um, this roto body would require for me two days two days to finish nine to five um, for me, um, and that's using all the techniques at will um, and iterating, reviewing again and again and again. Um, yeah, probably, this will probably take me two days to do nine to five. Um, this tutorial will probably be about 30 minutes all up, so I've got a good start on the head and leg at the moment. Um, and the simple shapes, such as this arm here. To an extent, the shoulders, that would be done easily. Um, the core body would be done pretty easy once all the other shapes are in. And I uh, wouldn't have to worry about this arm at all because this is behind the body. So yeah, this would take me about two days to do, 9 to 5. And everything's staying consistent. So from this frame forward to here, apart from the legs, um, the tracker will take care of most of it. I just have to change a few motion blurring here and there, and the rest is pretty consistent. So hopefully this tutorial has helped, helped you um, in your rotoscoping. The main takes is the shortcuts, the grey and red previewing, um, and the uh, less points, less shapes, less work, tracking, uh, track whatever you can, please. Tracking it helps you so much more um, for the location, keyframing, um, and uh, feathering and motion blurring. Um, so I hope you like it. Uh, hopefully it makes your rotoscoping a lot, lot less of a nightmare as possible. And uh, I'll see you next time.